Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kai. I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about genetics. The topic for the day is chromosomal disorders. So as always, we'll get our objectives and then get going. Here are the things that I need you to know or be able to do by the end of this video. First, be able to describe the process and results of non-disjunction. Second, describe each type of chromosomal mutation. And finally, be aware of some chromosomal disorders. That's what we've got to talk about. Let's go ahead and get going with it. First thing to talk about is non-disjunction. Most of what we're going to talk about for the rest of this video relies on you understanding this concept. So make sure that you are with me as I talk about this. Non-disjunction is a failure of chromosomes to separate during cell division. So you can see right here, there's quick examples. These examples are for meiosis. But it can also happen during mitosis. Um, recognize right here, you can see this little explosion. Those two chromosomes, when these cells split, they didn't get separated from each other. Same thing right here. When these two cells split, the chromatids did not separate. So non-disjunction is simply a failure of chromosomes to separate during division. Now, depending on when that failure to, cell, to separate happens, you'll get a different result. If during meiosis one, non-disjunction occurs. You can see that this follows through and the end result is you have two gametes that are made that are in plus one, meaning that they have got an extra chromosome, and two made that are in minus one, in that they are missing a chromosome. So if non-disjunction happens during meiosis one, the end result is half your gametes being in plus one with an extra chromosome and half being in minus one, missing a chromosome. If that non-disjunction happens during meiosis phase two, the end result is that you have got one gamete that is in plus one, you've got one gamete that is in minus one, and then you've got two that are normal in, because see this guy, he made it through all right, he divided, so those two gametes are just fine. This one is missing a chromosome, that one has an extra chromosome. So recognize that when the non-disjunction happens is going to have a fairly significant effect on the gametes that are ultimately produced. A couple of genetic terms that you need to know as we talk about the rest of this stuff. First term is aneuploidy. Aneuploidy is any condition where you have either extra or missing chromosomes. If you are monosomic, you are missing one chromosome. So this means that you would have for humans a chromosome number of 45 instead of 46. Trisomy is where you have an extra chromosome, so you would have 47 instead of 46. And polyploidy is just any uh, condition where you have got a full extra set of genetic material. There are some plants that are actually 3N. There is a small type of rodent-like mammal that is actually 4N. So polyploid is where you have got a full extra set of genetic material. Now, there are several chromosomal altercation, altercations, alter that can happen. I'm just going to run through them real quick and give you a little diagram on the side so that you can see what's going on there. So first one is that you can get a deletion. This would likely happen when chromosomes are separating during anaphase of the cell cycle. And in a deletion, it is exactly what it sounds like. A piece of genetic material gets cut out of the situation and your resulting chromosome is missing some genes. So obviously that's going to be a problem if some important genes get deleted. Next alteration that you need to be aware of is known as a duplication. All of these are named very easily, so you can tell exactly what they are. If you look at our diagram there, you have got these two genes right here getting duplicated and then stacked back in. So this would have probably been a problem during S phase of the cell cycle. For whatever reason, that gene got copied twice, which means that this chromosome right here has a double set of genetic material. Usually not a problem for the organism that has this sort of condition might just produce a little bit extra of whatever those genes are coding for. Next up on the parade is going to be an inversion. Exactly what it sounds like, you take two genes, you flip them upside down, you stick them back in. So if you look along the top there, first one you've got pink above green, get the inversion and you end up with green above pink. Also probably not a big deal, genetically speaking. It could cause some problems, but both genes are still there. You have not lost any genetic material, so overall effect may not be that bad. 
Your final uh, alteration that you need to know is a translocation, and this is where two chromosomes flip pieces. And I'm not talking about like in crossing over where they just trade like a gene with each other and it's all nice and reciprocal and matched up and everything's good. This is where like full pieces get broken off of chromosomes and stuck onto other chromosomes. The one you see right there is known as a reciprocal translocation where both chromosomes trade an equal amount of genetic information, but there's non-reciprocal translocations where a piece gets broken off of one chromosome and stuck onto another. So be aware of translocation. You're just pulling a piece off of one, sticking it on another. Now some effects or some actual disorders that are associated with chromosome abnormalities. First one, best known probably, is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is known as trisomy number 21. If you look over here on our karyotype, an individual with Down syndrome will have three chromosomes at number 21. Um, there are many phenotypic effects of Down syndrome included in them are mental disabilities, you have got short stature, poor muscle tone, um, extra skin on the eyes and the hands, occasionally they're sterile, um, shorter life expectancy. So there's a lot of phenotypic effects that go along with having this trisomy at spot number 21. Next one to be aware of is known as Klinefelter syndrome. This is a situation where a male has actually got an extra X chromosome. Circle it for you down here on the karyotype. You can see that there's two big X's and one Y. So this individual has got an extra X chromosome. Generally, phenotypically, the male will be male. However, um, the testes generally will not develop and the man will be sterile. He also might uh, have a lower testosterone production than normal. Next one on the parade is going to be Turner syndrome. This is the only known monosomy in humans that we can actually survive. And this is a situation where a female is missing an X chromosome. If you look down at the right there, there's a circle where there should be another chromosome. In Turner syndrome, you have got a situation where phenotypically the individual is female, though ovaries generally fail to mature, which means that she is sterile. Last syndrome, as we wrap up for the day, is going to be, all right, scratch that. I got two more, sorry. Um, Creduchat. Creduchat actually is a deletion on chromosome number five. If you look at our karyotype there, you can see on the left there is the actual picture, and then the right is a nice clean diagram. You lose the top of chromosome number five. Now, even though it's possible that the chromosome there on the left could have an allele that covers over the piece that's been lost, there are still problems. Um, individuals with Creduchat are usually very small. Um, they've got a large forehead, can have a pointy shaped nose. Um, there is mental disability generally associated with it. It is named Creduchat, which means cry of the cat because their cry is generally like a distressed cat. Um, and usually individuals with Creduchat do not live much past their early years of childhood. Now for real this time, last disorder, CML, which is a type of leukemia, results from a 922 translocation. So you're taking a piece from 9 and a piece from 22, as you can see there in the diagram on the left, breaking them off, switching them around translocation style so that part of chromosome number 9 is now on 22 and 22 is on 9. This results in white blood cells that do not properly adhere to the cell cycle, so they kind of divide uncontrollably leading to leukemia, which is a proliferation of white blood cells. So that is your march through chromosomal mutations and disorders, and also um, translocation, which is the problem or the malfunction that causes a lot of these things. I hope that this little tutorial was helpful to you. Hopefully you'll join us again on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. We'll see you again.